Hey guys, it's me, LaShonda, with Little CEO here. Who is this? Christopher. Christopher. I'm sure some of you haven't seen Christopher in a long time, but Christopher is in my video today. Just had a mommy moment. It's Mother's Day. We're going to talk about that, but we just had a mommy moment. Uh, wanted to do this video, whether you're listening today or any day for me, every day is Mother's Day. So I'm just excited to have an opportunity to do a video and talk to you guys. First and foremost, me and Christopher have something special to say. What do we want to say today? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day! Like I said, every day is Mama's Day. And I wanted to just do this with my little one here. Um, just in appreciation for all the moms out there. My mom, my sister, my aunts, my grandmoms, my close neighbors and friends, my virtual family, for everybody out there who is a mama. And my little one, he's all serious. He's like, well, when is she going to tell me to get out of the camera? Um, all the mamas out there, today my video is about women in the pursuit of happiness. And so first I have to say Mother's Day, happy, happy. Then I'm going to let him go and play with his Legos so that we can talk, okay? So one more time, what do we say? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Alrighty, ladies. Um, you know, I also, as, as my hubby says to me, suck in the love, suck in the love. You know, we, we call it baby fat, but you know, mama, it's, it's a little bit more than baby fat. When the baby's like grown, right? That's up, all up in there. Um, I wanted to do this video today, have a conversation with you about what it means to be happy and what it means to be on the pursuit of happiness. Especially, you know, the whole concept of Mother's Day is happy Mother's Day, to be happy today, to celebrate what it is to be a woman, to be a mom, to be an entrepreneur, to be a hardworking sister. All of those things in combined, celebrating womanhood, womanhood, I should say. Um, and, you know, there's an interesting saying. It says, happy wife, happy life, right? Everybody knows if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. When mama got the scowl on, <laughs> ain't nobody happy. Nobody wants to be around mama. It's like touch and go, right? Um, but I've been thinking about that statement, I guess, as I get older and my birthday approaches, just thinking about happy. Sometimes I'm not happy, right? What does it mean to be happy? Sometimes, you know, my, my son, one day I was reading his bedtime story, then um, I was walking out, he said to me, are you happy? And I was like, he said, are you happy or sad? And I said, why do you ask me that question? He's like, because uh, you look serious on the face and you're not smiling. And um, I was listening to one of the ladies in my circle, one of my, my clients. Um, she did a powerful telesummit. It was all day. Uh, Miss Blue, she did uh, for the Sisters Only Workshop. And so when she was starting to talk and she talked about the process of helping sisters go through and get through whatever it is that she wanted to help them through in that series of audio sessions, she talked about um, this idea that we can get hard. Like after a while, we can get hard, we can look hard in the face because we're not taking the time to really pamper ourselves and think about what it is to be happy. And I know there are a lot of days where I don't like to look in the mirror because I know I look hard. <laughs> I look real hard that day, <laughs> whether it is I'm tired, I'm not happy, I'm a little bit overwhel uh, overwhelmed or overweight, and I got this extra love that I'm trying to make sure that I talk to you and I suck it in at the same time so I do what I need to do for this video. Um, I'm not happy all the time, right? And so we need to figure out what we need to do to be happy more of the time because uh, as human beings, we're not always going to be happy. That's just the reality of life. You can't change that. But I like the idea of the pursuit of happiness because that means you are consistently working towards being happy. So I've got five B's that I want to share with you guys today. Um, it starts off with a book. Uh, it's a book by Valerie Burton. And um, I went to the bookstore to get it for me and my mom, and it was sold out. And so I said the next best thing is to get it virtually, and I got it on my iPad. You can get it on pretty much any mobile device. Happy Women Live Better, Valerie Burton. Um, reading this right now, if you want to read it with me, you are absolutely welcome to do so. You can download it for, I think, under $3 right now. 13 Ways to Trigger Your Happiness Every Day. Um, this is important for me because, one, as Valerie points out in the book, Women can do more and be more in this country and in certain places around the world um, than we ever could, and yet it seems like our happiness is declining. You know, we can do more, and yet we are not as happy as we used to be because 
con somehow we've got all of these responsibilities and expectations that are bubbling to the surface and things are just overwhelming. <laughs> They're hard, you know, and again, as I grow and mature more and more into my womanhood and talk with other women, I want this conversation of being happy, which she talks about in the book. She says, have this conversation with other women. I want this to be a part of the process. And so I said to myself, I'm going to share five B's, what I'm doing on my pursuit of happiness. One, getting this book, reading it, um, learning from others, because you may say to yourself, well, I know how to be happy. I know if I make more money or if I get that man or if I get that job, that's going to make me happy. If I can do these things for my kids or if I can have my first kid, that's going to make me happy. All of these things are going to make me happy. But guess what? I know that because I've done that. Right. I said, OK, I remember when I was dating Jay, I said, look, we've got a time frame here. So at a certain point, if I don't have a child, if we're not building a family together, this is not going to work. <laughs> so he looked at me and he's like, you for real? I was like, yeah, I'm for real. I'm for real, real. So, um, you know, wanting to have a family, wanting to have um, a spouse who was loving and supportive, as supportive as Jay is, um, wanting to have a beautiful child and having Chris to Christopher and you knowing that I was listening to TV Jakes and he says, you know, one of the things you have to learn how to do is to be happy with what you have. You know, you may not have the perfect um, child or the perfect marriage or the perfect lifestyle, but you've got to figure out how to say thank God for the blessings. I've learned how to do that, to be happy for the little things around me. But understanding that when I got the family, I still was striving for more. When I got the car, I was still striving for more. When I went from trying to figure out how to make 10 cents off of AdSense to breaking $1,200 to making $50,000 and saying, okay, now I need to make $10,000 a month. I was happy, but still wanting to make more, still wanting to strive for more. Because as Valerie says in her book, as women, when we place our happiness and define it based on things, sometimes we'll find that when we get those things, we still want more things. You know, now that I'm in the beautiful big house, I still want more things. And I'm still saying some days I'm not as happy as I would like to be. Some days I'm crying. Some days I'm looking funky in the face because I'm a mom and I miss my mom. Or I miss my sister. Or I miss my sister friends, my besties, my girls. Or I just miss me. <laughs> I miss the me I used to be before I became the family, right? Before I went from being somebody's dependent to having people dependent on me saying, okay, well, what are we supposed to do, mom? <laughs> and me going, oh, God, I'm the one who has to make the final decision. Why? Why? What happened? Right? So for me, the five B's, number one, starting with the book, yes, you know or you think you know what you needed to do to get happy, but once you get those things, what next, right? And some of these things are things that are larger than life goals, things that I want to do within the next five years, or, you know, I want to take some time, or when I get more time, I'm going to go on vacation. These are big goals that we set that we want to do at some point. But what I like about this book is it's 13 triggers to be happy on an everyday basis. So you wake up going, oh my God, I feel good. We wake up being able to, I wake up being able to look in the mirror and go, oh girl, you look good today. You don't look that hard because you was looking real hard, <laughs> right? So thinking about that, sorry, the, the New York up, the New York accent comes out sometimes. Thinking about that, the first part is knowing that I have to look into the book. I have to look out of myself because just going off of what I thought happiness was supposed to be isn't necessarily the right thing to do. So that was number B, number one. Number two is the bike, right? My, my hubby says to me, you're keeping secrets. I was like, what are you talking about, secrets? He comes in, I, well, I come in, there are these big boxes um, because, yeah, I did keep a secret. I went and I bought some exercise equipment. I bought, I have a treadmill, uh, got a bike, um, got an ab roller, got all this stuff. And he's like, when did you, when did you do that? I'm like, long time, long time. But why? Because this, this love, this extra love, think, do you think I look cute? <laughs> this extra love all up in here and all up around this face that I think is probably greasy because the light is on me. I tell you, oh, the skin that I am in, in a video, um, wanting to feel better. I am a diabetic, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, these things that run in my family. And because I'm always working on doing things for my business or my clients or my family. I don't get to do what I need to do for myself. 
And I love this quote. It says, um, uh, when adults say, I don't have enough time, it's like kids saying, the dog ate my homework. Like that's the adult excuse, right? So I always say, I don't have enough time to eat better and look better and cook better and do better. So I'm like, look, make time, right? So bought the bike. Um, and that's going to be a part of my routine. I was actually watching a video from one of the uh, entrepreneurial women I love, Marie Forleo, and she's like, you know, when you think about successful entrepreneurs, I can't tell you one successful entrepreneur that doesn't have an exercise regimen. At some point in their day, they're just pounding away because it gets the adrenaline rushing. They're doing what they need to do, and they're motivated to move forward. And when I watched that, I said, man, I need to do that because I'm, I'm feeling drained right now, honestly. And then, you know, I was listening to one of my other clients, Renee, resultsbyrenee.com, had an eight-day teleconference, and one of the ladies talked about the idea that people say you need to be healthier. I think it was Dr. Cara. And she's like, you know, when you, but it's easier said than done. And she talked about diabetes and diabetics like myself. She's like, you know, some people say, well, you, you're a diabetic, so take your medication, eat better exercise and she's like when you're a diabetic and you're drained and you can barely get out of bed it's hard enough taking that first step let alone getting that foot on a pedal and so I appreciated listening to um, Renee's session but it also kind of reminded me that I need to get back to do what I need to do because I was doing my we fit for a little bit and then that kind of dropped off <laughs> I was doing my organic foods for a little bit and it dropped off you know how things go um, but for me number two on the pursuit of being happiness was getting that bike, right? So thinking about what you need to get to make yourself um, really power up. That's what I talk about and I do my power up calls um, to, to feel like you're creating daily routines for yourself that are gonna help you feel better. Um, so we talked about the book, the bike, a break. Breaks are so important. Um, you know, I think it's self-explanatory. There are certain things that I like to do to take breaks, whether it be I've got a crash pad in my office just kind of lying there. <laughs> and um, sometimes I'm brainstorming on my crash pad, but sometimes I'm just taking a damn nap because, you know, yeah, naps are for kindergartners, but they're for hardworking mamas too. Um, but also, um, I fight with myself with this. I'm, I'll be exhausted late at night, um, but I take the time to, to like my late night delight is Netflix and sitting down and watching my sitcoms and my hubby sometimes he's like, you're supposed to be watching that with me. You know, anybody who's got a partner understands when you two watch something together on Netflix and it's like cheating when you watch it without them because they get real pissed, right? So, I, but I purposely have to have that time for myself late night where it's quiet and I'm watching not gory stuff. My hubby likes to watch the gory stuff. I got to watch stuff that makes me laugh. My chick flicks, my 90s sitcoms, my British shows. Things that make me de-stress, um, because on the pursuit of happiness on a daily basis, it's important to feel good, um, and it's important to kind of usa let go some of the things that are in your life. So thinking about those things that you need to do to take a break, really important. Budget, a big one. Um, I think for me on the pursuit of happiness is the idea of being able to do the things that you want to do when you want to do them. And because I work at home for myself and I've been able to do that for uh, over six years, well, no, over 10 years now, I've been uh, an entrepreneur online, working at home for over six years, I do have the ability to do what I want to do. And so uh, working on now and helping you work on, and if you guys want to see my budget, I can talk to you about the process of putting that together, working on a budget so that it's, an opportunity for me to do all of the things that I want to do in this phase of my life, now that I've gotten here. Um, I think that's important. I think you have to think about for yourself, when you're not just a mom or a woman or an entrepreneur, but just as a person, waiting until five years, 10 years, six months to do certain things in your life, you can't just put them on a list. You've got to be proactive about it. How are you going to make that happen? Um, in my women are, women, WPN, Women Power Networking, on Saturday, we talked about creating our bucket list. And I talked about how I strategically, every week, put aside money. When I make my profit, I put it aside because I've got to make sure I've got the money that I need to do the things that I want to do for myself. And I'm not scrambling, right? You know, sometimes folks say, okay, I'm going to take a vacation, but I don't have the money. So I'm just going to pull money from all these different places and then make it happen. No. Having a budget and strategically putting aside money so that you can have that big cruise, that big vacation, that you can travel whenever you want, when now versus later. 
having a budget is so important, which is something that I'm working on. Um, and I've been successful at doing it up until this point, but taking it to the next level is where I am and helping you get to where I was is definitely something that I can do. Um, last but not least, we talked about here, we talked about the book, the bike, break, budget. Last but not least is business. Um, for me on the pursuit of happiness, I believe independence is the key. Um, another great quote, uh, education can make you a living, self-education, well, formal education can make you a living, self-education can make you a fortune. And I know that I, I will never say anything negative about education because being a Columbia University grad, computer science, techie girl, that got me a whole lot. But self-educating myself and creating my own business, wow, got me a lot more, right? So understanding what you need to do to build your business, that's kind of what I do on Sister Sense. I've created the 4Moms bundle at 4mom.sistersense.com with a lot of wonderful resources that I have for my mother entrepreneurs. I always say that in addition to the moms like myself who have real children, my first baby was my business, so all entrepreneurs are mothers to me in one way, shape, or form. But 4mom.sistersense.com includes opportunities to listen to my weekly calls and all the different things that I've learned as a service professional and online entrepreneur inside of that particular bundle. And if that's something that you're interested in getting, or if you'd love to listen to me and talk to me about your business or working on your business, getting that at 4mom.sistersense.com, that's something that you can consider as well. So, um, you know, you've got to work on your business. You've got to work on your dreams. If you're not so much an entrepreneur, but your business is to create a better career for yourself so that you can build a better life for yourself, that pursuit of happiness is so important. Um, so, you know, again, I wanted just to create this encouraging video for the moms and the hardworking women out there. Um, as again, on the pursuit of happiness for women, the five things that I continue to pursue and help you, or at least want to share with you, um, the idea again of this book, this wonderful book that I'm reading by Valerie Burton on how women, happy women live better, um, the bike starting to exercise, being empowered, um, this idea of uh, breaks, <laughs> breaks, creating a solid budget for yourself. I'm going to talk more about the budgeting in another video as well as business. So hopefully these resources are helpful to you. You can find all this and more on my website, sistersense.com. Take care.